Hi everyone, and welcome to this presentation of the White Source User Interface. In this video, we are going to discuss all of the key areas of the White Source platform and walk you through the various screens and configurations you'll need to get up and running with your application. Please note that we will be covering each area of the platform at a high level, but you can always leverage our extensive knowledge base to get more information about the different concepts discussed here. Let's go ahead and start on the home screen. The White Source homepage provides immediate visibility of your organization's open source inventory, together with potential security vulnerabilities, license compliance, and easy to understand dashboards. At the top left, you will see a dedicated summary count of system category alerts reported for a given organization, product, or project, including the total count of policy violations, versions, licenses, quality, and security alerts. Please note that you can click each alert type to display an alert view corresponding to its category. Enabling you to perform selected actions, for example, ignoring alerts. Now let's go ahead and look at the different alerts displayed in the tiles. The policy alert is triggered when a library is meeting a condition inconsistent with a defined policy. Library-based alerts happen when any scanned library is found to be out of date, appears twice or more in different versions within a certain product, has more than one license, rejected and used reflects any library that went through a policy approval workflow, which was then later on rejected. Now on the security side, you'll see the total number of libraries with alerts, with a breakdown by vulnerability severity, and to the right of it, the total number of vulnerability alerts. The vulnerability analysis pane provides a view of your organization's vulnerabilities, and the license distribution pane provides data in which you can see the licenses resolution for products in your organization, enabling you to check for licenses that might not comply with your company's policy. And finally, over here at the bottom, you can see the pending tasks and user request tables, which display the unanswered update requests sent by the scanner. We'll talk about those a little bit more later when we discuss policies. Now, let's just take a moment to discuss how the white source, white source hierarchy is set up. The white source application is set up at three different levels, the organization, the product, and project. Now, how you decide to set up your instance depends entirely upon the needs of your organization and can be discussed in depth during the ac actual implementation. Just to give a couple of examples, some organizations may choose to use products as the application level while the project reflects a component of the application. Alternatively, we may find the product related to a specific development team, such as the API or the backend team, while the projects are the applications they're working on. Please note, we'll talk about this a little bit more, you can set policies on all three levels we just discussed. Okay, let's switch over to the admin tab. Under the system section, you can create or invite regular users and service users, which assist with the automation and the CI CD workflow without access to the UI, and then assign those users to specific role-based groups. You can also create groups and organizational level role assignments under this section, and then finally, over here at the bottom, you can keep track of your user login history. Now back here under the admin section, you've got to the left under the, section, the settings section, you can find access to additional organizational level configurations, such as which alerts to enable, managing in-house rules for proprietary libraries, and whitelisting when dealing with libraries that were approved for usage by your company. And then lastly, over here under the integration section, you can enable and configure SAML for your organization should you choose to do so. Now let's go ahead and move over to the Integrate tab and talk a little bit more about setting up your environments for scanning. In the top section, we can find key organization parameters. Here you will see the server URL and the API key, which is a unique identifier for organization at WhiteSource used for plugin configuration and scanning. This key essentially authorizes the metadata upload to the WhiteSource platform. We can also take a look at some of the advanced settings available on this page, but please note that all of these are entirely optional. Now, depending on what level of role-based access controls you intend to implement, you may opt to enforce user level access, which is a way to keep track of who's scanning and limit the access of individuals to specific products or projects. You'll often see this feature enabled in large organizations, and it requires a user key in addition to the API key to have the secondary admin privileges in order to submit a scan. Now product and project tokens are unique identifiers for each product and project in your organization. They're an organizational tool used to associate scans with new or existing products or projects. And then lastly, down here at the bottom, 
you can find more information about the available integrations for pipelines, repo integrations, and issue tracking. All the icons contain quick links to the documentation center. Now let's go ahead and jump over to the policies tab to talk a little bit more about them. Policies define a set of rules that reflect how an organization can handle specific conditions, such as restrictive license types, high security vulnerabilities, library staleness that are detected in the open source library used by its software. Now, each organization can decide its own policies, and that would be, as we mentioned, at the organizational product or project level about which security issues and vulnerabilities are acceptable or not, depending on their severity level, and which specific actions should be taken to handle them. Alternatively, they can be created against specific license types that may contain risky copyright and patent laws, for example, GPLs. Now, libraries are matched with, within the defined policies. A match type defines which criteria of the library should be checked to determine if the action should be applied to it. As you can see, this can be based upon license types, glow patterns, vulnerability severity, or a variety of other options as well. Now, once a policy is confirmed against a match library, you can have one of the following actions run. Approve basically means that the library will be automatically approved and the request will be closed. Reject means the library will be automatically rejected. By default, a policy violation alert would be created in the system. In addition, if the build server is configured to do so, in the case of a policy violation, the build will also fail. The reassign action means the request will automatically be re reassigned to a designated user or group in the system, which is not the default approver. Moving down here to conditions, these are basically subtasks which are automatically created as conditions for the different assignees according to the policy definition. Conditions will be automatically sent to assignees when libraries are matched. They can be assigned to either a single user or group or to different members of a group or organization. Finally, we've got issues over here. White source can integrate with issue tracking systems to automatically create a ticket when a policy match occurs. As a result, those issues are populated with the relevant white source information required to mitigate the risks that trigger the creation of the issue. Now, since policies can be set up at the org, product, and project level, policy conflicts are resolved by priority if there's overlap. The way it works is like this. A product level policy would be of a higher organization, would be of a higher priority than organizational level policies, and the project level will be higher than the product level policy. Okay, let's go ahead and move over to the product level settings, which can give you more granular control over your product. So we're gonna go up here, click on products, go into this Java application over here, and then you can see under each product, you've got this settings wheel over here on the upper right side. It's here that you can restrict access to specific groups or individuals. For example, under product assignment, it would give a group or a user the ability to view the product data and all projects under it and open tickets for library as well. By default, all users in the organization are members of the product. Therefore, assigning a user as a member of the product will cause all others to be excluded. And you can see descriptions are listed over here for each one of these permissions on the right side over here. The last thing that we'll look at is the white source reporting capabilities, which provide enhanced security operations and regulatory compliance by providing reports on security vulnerabilities and alerts, detailed compliance information, library licenses information and implications, various risk factors, and much, much more. Let's look at a few of the key reports. The first one that you have over here is the inventory report. The inventory report, sometimes referred to as the SBOM or Bill of Materials, enables you to view detailed information about all open source libraries in your account. It provides a description of the library function, its assigned licenses, the library match type, and the number of instances in which the library is used in the organization. In this report, you can also set attribute values for specific libraries, mark them as in-house, for example, like this, and then add them to the list of whitelist libraries approved by your company and much more. On the compliance side, we've got the due diligence report, which enables you to view due diligence information on each open source library for the selected scope to comply with appropriate legal requirements. Please note, you don't have to generate it at the organizational level only. You can also reduce it to a specific product and a specific project as well. The next report we'll take a look at is the vulnerabilities report. This contains all the relevant information about your vulnerabilities, such as severities, the number of occurrences, CBSS3 scores, 
publish dates, and top fixes for libraries, which were found vulnerable in your inventory. Now, it's important to point out that all of these reports can be narrowed in scope, and they contain additional filters to narrow down the results. So in this case, for example, you can filter by severity, library, CBSS score, publish date, top fix, and much more. Another interesting report is the risk report which is a management level tool that provides a bird's eye view of all aspects of an account's open source libraries regarding security, quality, and compliance. Let's take a look. What's very useful about this report is that it can be generated in a single click PDF export for people who may not wanna access the UI and easily share it amongst people within the organization. One final report, is the plugin request history, which provides up-to-date details of all plugin update requests for the organizations, including whether there were policy violations during the scan. So this is basically historical data about all of the different scans that were, were, that were performed. Thank you very much for your time to learn about the White Source UI. Please check the description for a link to our knowledge base.